Um, um, there was an interview where An um, Angela Davis like two weeks ago, and they were asking her, you know, just about different things, or whatever. And then they asked her about like kind of does she follow the presidential politics stuff, and she talks favorably about Bernie, like how she like likes his politics. You know, while he's not necessarily going, you know, a lot of people say this, like he's not necessarily leading the revolution for black people, for black independence, so to speak. But at the same time, she acknowledges that he is putting issues that most definitely matter to our community on the table. And I thought that was, I mean, I thought it's, it's, a, it's like a question to answer, but it's a, actually it's a decent, you know, section that she just talks about Bernie and the policies and the platform and stuff. And I'm just like, okay, that's, I think that's positive, but we have stuff like that happening, right? People yeah. won't say, go vote for him. They'll say, oh, yeah, you know, there are these issues. But I think he's really good. Like, even the NAACP president down here in Georgia, he made some comments on MSNBC last week, which I never even saw the video to the other day. I didn't even know the interview existed. And it was just like, you know, we're not going to endorse anyone, but, you know, he says some good stuff, and you can't count him out. And I just think that um, people have to get off, you know, they got to get off the pot because – we're not ever going to have liberation. We're not ever going to have independence in any form if we're going to sit there and straddle the, the line. This is the system we're all in right now, and is is I, I have a problem when we say we're not going to be involved in the system, but then you're mad that the system does not treat you right. a certain way. You're not engaged and you're not involved in the system. So what is it supposed to do? It's not representative of us, okay? Because you don't vote and you don't engage. I understand why historically that is. But we have to decide that we're going to change things. And that's all we can do is just force the voice and force the change. So um, I also had like an, uh, some anecdotal like information was provided to us that Bobby Seale, also one of the co-founders of the Black Panther Party, Bobby Seale is another person who has favorable thoughts about Bernie Sanders. Yet and still, it's like, dude, like your voice alone would do so much. We're talking about brothers on the block, sisters on the block folks in the hood actually taking and giving him a second chance. People aren't listening. The average person is not listening to Michael Eric Dyson. Let's just be real. Like, yeah. I, I, again, I still disagree with you guys about the way of engaging. I really think that we need to be targeting average individual black voters and not worrying about messing with this elite person over there or this senator or whatever. Because, I mean, people are disengaged. People are not voting because they don't think it matters. They don't think any of the issues are being addressed affect them. They think it's a bunch of rich white people who don't know nothing. Yes, Bernie Sanders is, is, a, is a decently well-off white person who's 70-something years old and has worked hard his whole life. Um, but he, no struggle. Um, you know, he has... He knows struggle. He has had certain experiences or whatever. And I really do think when you look at the platform, when you listen to him talk, when you listen to him talk, he clearly is somebody who knows what it is to, like, sleep in the same room with a few other family members and, and, and maybe not have, like, a full course meal for dinner. Like, he clearly understands the struggle that a lot of us are going through. And right. just more people, I definitely agree with Kelly, like, we just, we just, just with more people, like, we just need to know just the basic plan, and that he is for, uh, like, he really is for us. Like, like last point I'm going to make, because I'm kind of going all over the place, but I heard him speak in South Carolina to a small Democratic win, women's group, and he talked about the issue of affordable child care. Now, you know, Hillary talking about affordable child care, that's just like some academic exercise for her, because that's not an issue she's ever had. That's not an issue her daughter has. It's not an issue anybody <laughs> in their media circles ever had. But Bernie was talking about the struggle of his daughter, who's a teacher, and her husband, in Vermont, and he's like, you know, they're they're solidly middle class, and they struggle to pay for decent and affordable child care for my grandkids. He's talking about one of his staffers in D.C., her and her husband. And again, we're talking about, these are married couples, right? Imagine what single parents are going through. Correct. So he has a he has a real-life frame of reference for the very real issues that are affecting our our, our citizenry, our communities, and and, and, and we, that, that, just, that, that information just has to get down to the very basic, most local voter in however way we can do it, so... That's yeah, my and you know how that gets down there. That the way that it's the way that it gets down to that individual level is by people who feel as though they are disenfranchised by them going out and talking to fifty people, by them mm -hmm. going out and just pounding the ground one by one by one by one and speak and get your voice amplified. For instance. Right now, I'm speaking to about, I would say, 400 people. We're speaking about 400 people right now, which is quite actually the most I've ever had. So let me give ourselves a little, you know, Progressive Army a big applause. When we started this, we were talking to five people, literally, my, my brother, my mother, and actually two people. That was it. Now, our voices have been amplified, and we can impact you 
to go out and affect 50 people on your own. Whether you get 400 people or not, it doesn't matter. Go get 25 people and mobilize them to not only vote, like Nina Turner says, it can't be every four years. It has to be every opportunity. This, any potential for making a change in this system has to be a daily commitment. It has to be every single day, not just during an election cycle where you go, like Kelly said, go at the last minute and throw your vote out there at the last minute. That doesn't affect change. We need you to magnify your voices. And that's something that we're going to do over here at the Progressive Army with the help of people that are seasoned, that have done this, who have seen this come, who have seen this go, the political structure, what needs to be done, people like Chad. Chad, thanks so much for joining me. Um, and please forgive me for massacring your last name. Could you give it to the <laughs> audience correctly? <laughs> that is Lupkeys. L U H. It's it's. I got a phonetics uh, spelling that I sent to you, and whatever. It's German name. Nobody gets it right. Okay. Doesn't matter. Go ahead, man. The floor is yours.